In today's video, we'll go over Arch Linux versus Gen2. Okay, so we're talking about two legendary Linux distributions, and they're both famous for giving users ultimate control. But what does that actually mean in practice? Well, it's all about building an operating system that is, from the ground up, uniquely and fundamentally yours. So here's what we're going to cover. First, we'll see how both distros have the same goal but take totally different paths to get there. Then we'll dig into our core metaphor, the architect versus the alchemist. We're also going to bust a pretty common myth about performance, talk about what it's like to live with a system you've built, and then at the end, we'll help you figure out which builder are you. All right, let's jump in. So both Arch and Gen2 are for people who are ready to move beyond those off-the-shelf pre-configured systems. The whole journey starts not with some fancy graphical installer, but with a blank canvas. You get a minimal command line base, and that's it. From there, it's all on you to build up piece by piece, creating a system where absolutely nothing exists that you didn't explicitly put there. And, you know, this shared DNA is really what makes them so compelling. You start out super small, but the potential for customization, it's just massive. And that right there makes for a seriously deep learning experience. Both of these distros are totally user-centric. They expect you to be in the driver's seat making the decisions. Plus, they're both rolling releases, which is a huge deal. It means you're always getting the latest software, no more of those big disruptive version-to-version -version upgrades. But this is exactly where their paths split. And to really get our heads around how different they are, we've got to explore their core philosophies. And we're going to do that through a simple but really powerful metaphor. Okay, so think of it like this. Arch is the architect. Its whole philosophy is about elegant simplicity. It gives you these high-quality, prefabricated parts and a really clean blueprint to work from. Gen 2, though? Gen 2 is the alchemist. Its whole mantra is that user choice is king. This means you get the raw, fundamental elements and the secret knowledge to, well, transmute them into whatever you can dream up. And this difference in philosophy directly leads to their core technology. Arch is what we call a binary distribution. Its package manager, Pac-Man, just grabs pre-compiled software and installs it. It's super fast, really efficient. It's like snapping together perfectly engineered Lego blocks. But Gen2 is a source-based distribution. Its package manager, Portage, actually downloads the human-readable source code for a program and then builds it from scratch, right there on your machine. That's the act of alchemy, turning raw code into a working program that's been tailored specifically for your hardware. And this table just crystallizes the whole trade-off, doesn't it? For Arch, you've got Pac-Man. It's binary, so installation is lightning fast. And its killer feature? Oh, it's definitely the AUR, the Arch User Repository. It's this massive, community-driven treasure trove of software. Then there's Gen 2's Portage. It's source-based, so yeah, it's way slower because it has to compile everything. But its killer feature is something called use flags. These are basically little switches you can flip before you even compile a program to turn specific features on or off. The result? A truly minimal and ridiculously customized piece of software. Okay, so this brings us to one of the biggest, most persistent myths in the entire Linux world. The idea that the alchemist's approach, compiling everything from source, is going to give you this massive performance boost. I mean, it sounds logical, right? If you build software specifically for your CPU, it's got to be faster. But is that actually true? Well, check out this quote. This comes from a user who, like a lot of people, decided to test this very assumption. They went through all the trouble of setting up two nearly identical systems, one Arch and one Gen 2. And then they ran a whole bunch of benchmarks. And let's just say the results were not what they were expecting. Here's the thing. The truth is, any real performance gains you'd get from compiling from source are, well, they're largely a myth in the modern 64-bit era. Back in the old 32-bit days, yeah, it could make a noticeable difference. But today, on modern hardware, compiler optimizations have gotten so good that the generic binaries you get with Arch are already incredibly efficient. And this just illustrates the real trade-off perfectly. The main benefit of Gen 2 isn't raw speed, it's control. And the cost of that control is time a lot of time. For example, just compiling a big package like the GCC compiler can take over eight hours on a little Raspberry Pi. And even on a high-end laptop, you're still looking at almost half an hour. This whole alchemy thing, it definitely requires patience. So you've done it. You've built your system. You're either an architect with this sleek modern build, or you're an alchemist with a truly unique, intricate creation. So what's it actually like to live with it day to day? Well, in daily use, these differences get really clear really fast. 
With Arch, that rolling release model means you always have the latest and greatest software. But that bleeding-edge nature can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes things break, and you've got to manually fix them. Gen 2, on the other hand, can be rock-solid stable, partly because its system for handling dependencies is so robust. But you earn that stability through careful management and, you guessed it, all that time spent recompiling during updates. The communities themselves also kind of reflect these philosophies. Arch has a huge community, but it's famous for its read the manual culture. You're pretty much expected to do your homework before you ask for help. The Gen 2 community is smaller, but it's often described as being a bit friendlier, a little more chill. Maybe it's because there's this shared respect for the seriously complex journey everyone's on. Now, we have to talk about the Arch community's crown jewel, the Arch Wiki. And I am not exaggerating when I say it is one of the single best, most comprehensive technical resources on the entire internet. It is so good that you'll constantly find people running Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever else turning to the Arch Wiki to solve their problems. All right, we've gone through the philosophies, we've busted the big performance myth, and we've looked at the day-to-day -day realities. So let's put it all together and figure out what kind of builder are you? So let's break it down side by side. Arch's big pros are its speed, the massive amount of software you get from the AUR, and that amazing documentation. The main con? You might run into some instability now and then. For Gen 2, the pro is just absolute, total customization. But that comes with some big cons, a massive time investment, and a learning curve that is seriously steep. So who is the architect? Well, you might be an architect if you really value efficiency. You want to build a custom system for sure, but you want to get it done quickly using the best pre-made components. You love having access to all the latest software through the main repos and the AUR, and you don't mind getting your hands dirty and troubleshooting an issue every now and then to stay on that cutting edge. And who's the alchemist? You might be an alchemist if, for you, the journey is just as important as the destination. You don't just want to build a system. You want to understand it on a deep, fundamental level. You're the kind of person who craves that granular control you get from use flags. And for you, the time spent compiling? That's not a chore. That's part of the fun. And this quote really just nails it, doesn't it? It's not about which one is better. It's about what you value more. Do you want a fast, modern system that you can assemble efficiently? Or do you want an incredibly intricate system that you can truly deeply create from its very essence? So in the end, the choice isn't just a technical one. It's a personal one. Are you looking for the elegant efficiency of the architect or the deep, transformative power of the alchemist? The answer really says a lot, not just about the kind of system you want to build, but about the kind of builder you want to be. So which one are you? Let us know down in the comments. Are you on Team Architect or Team Alchemist? Thanks so much for tuning in.